Hey guys, back with another video. Today it's going to be a collections video. I've been looking forward to redoing this video since I noticed in these past few months, the video I first did of all my 110s I had at the time had gotten some comments. And so now I'm very happy to redo them now that I've gotten a whole bunch more since then. The only Buck 110 I'm not going to do in this video is this one right here. And this one is the reason is because I'm going to be sending this in to get the blade replaced. So it's not going to have the same blade when I got it. But right now, this one has a... This one has a 1991 blade in it. But when I get it back, it's going to have the modern blade. So this one I'm not going to show in this video. I'm just going to talk about it shortly and then get down to the rest of them. And I have them all sorted by years. Like I have 2021 all the way up to 1967 to 72. Now, be advised, I don't have all these years. I have mainly all of them organized by who, which one's older than the other. And I guess first thing I'll start off with is the, is the oldest of the bunch. This is a Buck 110 from 1967 to 72. One of my favorite ones. As you, see, as you can see, when you compare it to a modern 110, looks very different. Because back in those days, they had to do it all mostly by hand. And the bevels are different, and even the edges are different. And even the handles are different when you compare them side by side. As you can see, this one's got more of a slimmer handle. This one's got more of a fatter handle. But the design itself has remained the same for, for almost 100 years. But, like I said, it's just it's slightly different than the other. Because you got to think, back in those days, they didn't have all the tools they have now. So this one's one of my favorites. Well, actually, I don't want to keep getting fingerprints on these. It's best to get the white gloves on. Because each and each and every one of these, I do repolish and keep clean because I don't want these getting ruined. Get the white gloves on. Give me a minute. Like I said, I do not want to keep repolishing these things. So, like I said, it's best to wear gloves so you don't get fingerprints on them. Again, it's a beautiful piece of buck history. Another difference that most people will definitely realize is the pin construction. As you can see, this has got a three pin design. This one's got a four pin design. That thing you noticed. So again, 1967 to 72, buck 110. Beautiful piece. Okay, that's that one. Next is the second oldest. This one is a 1972 to 86 buck 110. Now, once you get later on, they start to look very similar. As you can see, the handle design is almost the same, but again, it has a three-pin construction. This one's got a four-pin construction. And as you can tell, this one's more bulkier than this one, which is more rounded. Again, another distinct difference. Then again, the blades are a little bit different as well. Again, the blade grinds are a lot different back than those days. So there's that one. Again, a beautiful design. Very beautiful piece. Next is the third oldest. This one is a Buck 110 One Dot. And this one is from 1974 to 80. Again, very, very similar design to its older brother. It has a square handle. But now you start to see the four pin construction. There you go. But still has the bulky handle of its older brother. And again, the blade grinds are starting to look the same, but not very much. And of course, I should always mention the nail nicks on each one of these are different. But again, a very beautiful piece. That's that one. Uh, next is the fourth oldest. This one is one of my favorites. This is a 110 3 dot. This one is from 1980 to 81. Again, it's got the four pin construction like its brother before it, and it's got a similar blade grind. This one actually has never been used. This one's one of my favorites in my collection. It's never been used, never been sharpened. And when you compare that to a mint condition older brother to it, you can see the design is almost identical, just a few differences. Again, this one's a lot more bulkier. This one's more rounded, and the edges are a lot different. Again, that goes to show how things change over time. 
Beautiful. And then I heard recently that Buck's going to re-release the 112 version of these bulk ones, which is another design they were well known for. And hopefully I can get that one in my collection. Again, very beautiful, beautiful knife. Uh, next is my Buck 110 Catching Fish. Those who may remember, I got this in a trade a long time ago. This one is from 1986. And it's got a Coca Bolo handle. That's when you really start to see a lot of the customization, which Buck has been customizing knives for a long time. Whenever a knife maker starts, they always do customizations. And this one originally would have had a box with it and a lot of other certificates. But this one I got in a trade off a friend of mine. Again, now that you see it, they're starting to see the similarities between them. Got the four pin construction, it's got more of a rounded handle. So as you see later on, the design starts to look the same as the modern ones. Now the blade grinds are still a little bit different, but not much. Again, a beautiful design. You don't make them like that anymore. Okay. Uh, next is this one. This one is a 1988. 110. Sadly, this one's been retipped. Hopefully, I can find a replacement for this. Because the only reason I've not sent this into Buck is I want to find this exact year, but with a better blade. Again, a beautiful design. Sorry about the glare from the camera. Again, the design's very similar to the modern versions. You've got the four pin construction, you've got the rounded off handles, and the blade grinds are starting to look very, very similar. Again, a beautiful design. Sucks the blade's been retipped, but like I said, eventually I will replace this if I can find one that's in a lot better condition. Because what I do when something comes out of my collection, what I do is I originally had three three dot knives. Get that one out. It's right here. But then I found this one that's in mint condition. So what I do is when I find one that's in a lot more better condition, I keep that one and sell the one that's in a little bit worse condition. Like the original three dot I had, the blade had been retipped and it was in a little bit rough condition. This one, on the other hand, is in mint condition, unused, uncirculated. So, of course, I keep this one in my collection and then I sell the other one off. That's the only way something comes out of my collection is if I got a spare. Anyway, beautiful knife. Like I said, if I can find a replacement, I will. And then this one will go for sale. But like I said, it's, it's going to have to be until I can find a replacement. Anyway, to the next one, this one is an actual 2002. A person in the comment section in one of my older videos corrected me when I called this 50th anniversary of 2002, which was my mistake, I admit that. Like I said, it was one of those things, it was my birthday around the same year, yada yada. So yes, I know what year this one is made, and I'll tell you that when I get to this knife. But this one is an actual 2002 110 with the original Anvil stamp. So, again, my other point is it's starting to look very similar to the modern ones. It's got the four-pin construction, and it's got the more rounded handles, and the blade's starting to look almost identical to the modern ones. I'll show you an example. Again, a beautiful knife in general. One of my favorite stamps was the Anvil stamp. Again, just a beautiful knife in general. If I recall, this one's actually got ebony handles as well. Okay. Next one is the Ohio stamp. And I mistakenly called it Oklahoma a while back, which is my apologies. I've done that more than once. And this one's actually the Ohio stamp. And this one is from 2005. Again, you start to see a lot of the similarity starting to take shape. You've got the four pin construction. The blade grinds are starting to look the same because they're starting to tune up their work, starting to get new machines in. Again, a beautiful knife. And as you can see, those two, those two that I just mentioned actually have a similar handle. Beautiful condition. Anyway, next one is the... Twenty twelve model. Yeah, twenty twelve model. Again, 
four pin construction, very similar, rounded handles. Looks almost like a standard 110 that you can get today. Just a little bit of a different blade grind and a little bit of a different nail nick. Again, a beautiful knife in general. Which, even though these are collectible, Buck does even tell you that even their most expensive knives are meant to be used. So that's why most common people find Buck knives used is because that's what they were meant for. These were designed to be the workman's knife. Ah, and this was one of my favorites. This is my Boone and Crockett Club 2012 edition. And this one is actually from... 2012. Oh, I may have got the dates mixed up. My apologies. Hold on. Yeah, this is a 2011 model I just mentioned. My mistake. That happens a lot because the stamps look very similar. Yeah, this is a 2011 model. This is a 2012 model because that's the Boone and Crockett Club edition. My apologies. Again, that stamp looks very similar. That one back. Yep, 2012 with the Boone and Crockett Itch. And I actually got the tin that goes with this. Beautiful knife. Again, it's starting to look just like the modern ones you see today. Beautiful. Okay. Next one is the... Come on, where you at? Gotta turn my tang stamp chart around. There we go. This one is the 2017 model. Again, you start to see a lot of the same similarities. Four pin tanks, four pin construction, blade grinds look the exact same, nail nick almost looks the exact same. Beautiful. Uh, next is my custom buck. This one's one of the first ones I ever got. This one is a 2019 model. Beautiful condition. Customized laser, engra laser engraving. One of 250 made. My father's got the exact same one. Beautiful. Again, you don't see them like this that much. Again, I'm trying to be careful with these guys. I don't want to get fingerprints on them. Ah, next is another one of my favorites. The Buck 110 Auto Elite S30V Boss Knife. One of my favorite 110s. The only 110 automatic I've got. But I would love to get a standard 110 automatic. Eventually, I will. It's just one of those things I'll have to save up for. This one my father actually got for me. He got him one, too. And this one is from... 2020, only one year, only two years old, beautiful, and then of course, who can forget the signature buck snap, I love that sound, of course, it doesn't need a nail nick, because it's an automatic, beautiful, if this knife wasn't so expensive, I would actually carry this, uh, next is the 2020 regular model, this was the one I used to carry before I retired it. Beautiful. Again, like I said, it's all starting to see the same. You see the same pin construction. The blade grounds are the exact same. The only reason this blade looks a little bit slimmer is because I used this quite a bit before I retired it. Beautiful knife. I have a lot of history with that one. Uh, next is the 2014 50th anniversary. My sincere apologies to the person I miscorrected the year from. That was my mistake. And I actually looked at the box because it was hard to actually determine what year this one was actually made. And because they made a lot of them throughout the years. And I was able to narrow down by the way the stamp is on this one. And this one is a 2014 50th anniversary. Beautiful condition. I still don't know why that person returned this to Atwoods. I still don't know to this day because I never figured out anything wrong with it. Beautiful knife.
Okay. Uh, next is the 2021. The buck knife I carry all the time with me. This is the one buck tin, one tin I carry with me all the time. I never go a place without it. I carry this and my 2021 119. Beautiful. And last but not least is one of the ones I love the most. This is my Coca Bolo Drop Point 110. Again, 2021 edition. My, my father bought one for him and one for me. I love the Drop Point design. That one's definitely one of my favorites. And I love the finger grooves. I mean, it really goes good to your hand. If this knife, again, wasn't so expensive, I would happily carry this to try it out. Beautiful. Again, it goes to show. Awesome. Well, that's all my Buck 110s I've gathered so far. And I will do the Buck one, buck Lights in another video. And I will redo my 119, my 119 video. Like I said, stay tuned for when I send this in the Buck eventually. So I can get a new blade put in it. So here's what the blade looked like, Nat looked like then. And hopefully when I get it back from the factory, it's going to look like this. And then with 2022 on the horizon, hopefully Buck will release the new stamp. So that way I can get the new blade and then I will retire this one to my collection. I'll repolish it, oil it, and put it back in my collection. So like I said, don't forget how, how nasty this blade looks. I look forward to sending it in. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And as always... Stay sharp and keep collecting, my brothers.